Hearthstone deck tracker is maybe the most important thing that happened Hearthstone after Hearthstone. So in this video we will go everything you need to know about HS deck tracker and all of its cool features you probably don't even know about. If you're serious about Hearthstone, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget you can have me for some Hearthstone coaching. Now let's get into the video. You are not prepared. First thing we start off is obviously how you can actually download Hearthstone Deck Tracker and all you gotta do is go to hsreplay.net, downloads, and choose download for Windows or download for Mac respectively. Sadly, there's no more Deck Tracker for mobile players, which really sucks and does hinder the experience. So I do advise you, if you actually want to be climbing ranks, it's probably best to play on a PC with a working deck tracker. Obviously you can also reach legend from mobile, or even just without using deck tracker, but you can't even compare the two experiences. Like, deck tracker gives you so much extra information and so many things you're probably not even thinking about or even noticing. So yeah, for all the people who actually managed to reach legend without a deck tracker, congrats, but you're definitely not gonna be able to climb as high as you would if you had a working deck tracker with you. Okay, now let's jump into HS Deck Tracker and see what we're working with. Here's the layout of the program, which most of you already know about, but now let's jump into options from the top right corner, and from here we can see all the interesting settings we could be working with. Now starting from general, the first thing you want to be doing is actually show the timers, and usually this box would be checked on a default HS Replay Deck Tracker. When you have it checked, as you notice, this area right here disappears, so we want that to be reappearing, so you actually know how much time you're working with. When you're in a real game and not against the innkeeper, this should be telling you how much time you have left until your turn ends, and on the first turn it's gonna be 45 seconds, and after that it's 1 minute and 15 seconds. And it's pretty nice for you to know how much time you have to work with, so you decide how long you can actually ponder on what options you could be taking, and when it's actually go time and you have have to start throwing cards. This bottom half shows how much time you're taking on your turn and this upper half shows how much time the opponent is taking. Here you can also show the card flavor text which is also pretty fun to look at and you can read upon on some hilarious tooltips at the bottom right corner. But that's really not gonna help you climb extra ranks but it's still fun. Now we move down over to player and here you could be working with the scaling of the deck tracker and that's gonna change the size of this box which is showing your deck and this is the opponent's deck and you can do that from the opponent but let's concentrate on the player tab right now. We also have opacity you can make it more transparent and whatnot which is really not that helpful and we also have a bunch of different counters here which are obviously very outdated like we have a cartoon counter. Out of these the spell counter was actually viable before the yog nerf but right now it's also kind of on the obsolete side. Same for Jade, for Pogo, for Galakrond, for Libram, for Abyssal Curse. That's still actually viable, but not many people play that. So yeah, for standard right now, these tabs are really not that great. And they obviously do need to actually update some of these things. Like there's so many different things Deck Tracker right now is actually not counting. For instance, right now I'm playing Rainbow Mage. God knows it would be helpful for me, for me to actually have a counter for how many spell schools I've cast and actually which ones. So I can actually better decide what I should be discovering so I can get bigger effects, but that is just something HS Replay Deck Tracker does not have. The Firestone Deck Tracker on the other hand does have those options, but god knows that Overwolf overlay is just disgusting to work with, so I never really could make that switch. In the middle section here we have Show Board Attack Counter, which is an extremely powerful tool, which is gonna help you pinpoint instant lethals without really having to calculate all of the board damage, which is present right now. The moment I play a bunch of minions here, nothing is gonna change because the amount of damage that can go face did not change. So here we can do this and that. And as you can see right now this board attack is down to zero because I don't have any more attack left for the opponent's face. When I end turn however this is gonna change instantly to the total amount of damage I have available for the opponent's face. And when my turn starts I will know exactly how much damage I have ready to go mouth and that's basically gonna help me saving time to actually think about all of the different lethal outs I could be going for. Right now I obviously have lethal so not much to think about but if this was a real game and I had a bunch of minions on board and there were some taunts in the way and the opponent was on some respectable health, knowing at the bat of an eye how much damage I have in my possession definitely is gonna be saving me tons of time to actually be thinking about lethal outs. We also have this highlight last drawn card, which is also very important, especially if you're actually drawing a ton of cards. Like, for instance, if I was playing Finley in this deck, 
the moment I play Finley, all of the cards I'm actually drawing are gonna flash from my deck tracker and I'm gonna instantly know what cards I will be working with before the super slow animation actually resolves. Like, we all hate how slow Hearthstone animations are and this highlight last drawn card is gonna be helping you big time, again, in saving time and actually thinking about what you will be playing that turn instead of just waiting around and seeing what you're top decking. I'm gonna end my turn here so you guys see actually how the flash happens and now pay attention to the deck tracker and we're gonna see what we're drawing before it even shows itself. And here you saw Cosmic Keyboard flashing before it even showed on the screen, which saved you one second right there. But like I said, imagine if we played a Finley here. That literally saves you 10 seconds and you would have known instantly what cards would have been drawn there. Not that we have that many cards to draw right now, but you get the idea. And at the bottom we have deck title, which is not really that important. We have wins that shows you the amount of wins you have. Card on top helps you now with uh, all the dredge mechanics. Right now I can't show you that, but for instance, if we were playing a hunter or a warrior, let's say, and you play shout, and you played a free mana look at the bottom of your deck and discount all cards and put one on top, this card on top would tell you what's gonna be coming uh, on next turn. Cards is obviously all of your cards. Card at bottom is the cards at the bottom when you play something like Aquatic Form or other dredge cards. You're gonna know what's at the bottom. ETC Band, if we were playing an ETC deck, it shows you all of the free uh, sideboard cards you have in there. The card counter is actually pretty important. And it shows you how many cards you have in your hand. Right now we have 10. As well as how many cards you have left in your deck. And we have six. You could do the same thing by just hovering over the deck, but it's pretty nice just having to glance at this part here to actually know how much cards you have and actually decide if you will be overdrawing if you play some card draw cards and whatnot. Draw chances is another neat little part here, which is gonna help you make an educated guess of what are the odds of you top decking a card if you start drawing, let's say. For instance, right now we have 16% chance of top decking a card if we only had one copy of it left in the deck, and we also have a 33% chance top decking a card if we had two copies left in the deck. Right now we only have singles, but let's say if we need either Arcane Worm or Flame Geyser for a Sif combo, let's say, the odds of me top decking one if I drew a card right now would be 33%. Whereas if I needed a cold case to stay alive, the odds of that happening would be 16%. And that's if I draw one card. And also we have Fatigue Counter, which is usually not super helpful, but it is still something you definitely need to know about. And in some games, it definitely is gonna matter, and you need to pay attention to how much damage you will be taking on your next turn when you top deck a fatigue. Moving now to the opponent, we also have plenty of the same stuff here, but for the opponent's side. Again, we have scaling so we can change the size of this, opacity so we can make it transparent. Here we also have secret scaling. Surprisingly enough, a lot of AIs actually are not running any secrets. Don't want to be scaring away new players or anything. But with the secret scaling, you could actually reduce the size because if I leave it the same size like this, it would be clipping into the board space. And we don't really want that, so reducing the secret scaling definitely does help. Again, we have a bunch of different counters, which are not as helpful nowadays. We also have Hide Card Age, which right now, as you can see, these little 13 numbers, if I click Hide, they're no longer gonna be showing, but what this means is the opponent drew these cards on his turn 13. And this is important to know, like, if you see an opponent holding a card from turn 1, and it's closing turn 8, and you're playing against a control warrior, you're probably gonna be afraid of a potential Odin hack happening that turn, and that might help you make a different play. So the card age is definitely something you need to be paying attention, and it's also something you will never pay attention to if you didn't have a deck tracker, so there's a little niche benefit that deck tracker really brings to the table. Height card marks is also another thing that's really cool for you, and here we can see that he drew a couple of cards last turn with his arcane intellect, and he also drew a card with the help of novice engineer. It's not super helpful in this situation, but let's say if the tables were turned, and I have discovered something from uh, infinite as the Maxitude, or from the Prismatic Elemental, the opponent is gonna know I have a random spell for Mage, which is discounted by 1, or a random class spell, which is also discounted by 1, which could help him guess what he should be playing around. Again, we have Show Board Attack Counter, this time for the opponent, and here, at the glance of an eye, we can see that the opponent has the grand total of 1 damage, 
thank god we had this, cause how else would we know that as the glance of an eye? But you get the picture, if the opponent had a big board like this, again you will know at the glance of an eye if you need to be playing around certain damage outputs the opponent could be going for, for some lethal outs next turn. Highlight this card from deck also helps a little bit, so you can be seeing that information instantly, it would be visualized by the card name in red, and you will know you don't need to be playing around that card anymore. And again at the bottom we have the win rate, which helps you know how, how well you're doing against that particular class, their deck, the card counter again shows you how much cards they have left in the deck or in their hand, and we also have the opponent draw chances here, but you're gonna notice we have extra information here because unlike with our deck, here we know what cards we already have in hand, so all we need to know is what are the odds of top decking those cards, but here for the opponent, we also have the chances of them actually having a particular card in their hand already, so right now we know he has a 33% chance of having a particular card in his hand if he only runs one copy of that, let's say if this was a Sif mage against us, he has a 33% chance of having Sif in his hand already, and if he has two copies of that card in his deck, let's say a flame geyser, he has almost 60% chance of having one flame geyser in hand already. And again we have the top deck chances, 11 chance for him to top deck Sif and 22% chance for him to top deck a flame geyser respectively. And this is gonna come in handy when you're thinking about playing around let's say a certain board removal from the opponent, or playing around some certain lethal house they could be going for, so it definitely is gonna help you make better educated guesses what you should be playing around and how hard. And lastly you could actually change the appearance of your deck tracker with the appearance tab, and here you can tinker around with the theme, with dark or light, you could have some accents like uh, my mine has red here, and you could fool around with these as well. But those are just cosmetics. A few things that are actually unintentional and deck tracker gives you information about is if you actually dredge cards and you have two copies left of a card and one's at the bottom, one's in the middle of the deck somewhere, we don't know where, and afterwards you draw a card and it turns out to be the card that was at the bottom, deck tracker is actually gonna tell you if you drew the card from the bottom or from the middle of your deck, which is definitely unintentional and definitely should not be available information for you, but it does indeed happen a lot. Druid would be a good example for that because they love dredging and they also love drawing nature spells, so if you have a nature spell at the bottom but you still have another nature spell in the middle, you're gonna know if you actually drew from the bottom or from the middle, and this does help you in terms of deciding if you want to dredge again, knowing that you would be getting an extra card at the bottom to see. Another unintentional thing would be with plagues right now, and if a deck that actually has a bunch of plagues shuffled into him plays Finley, let's say, deck tracker is gonna flash plagues if the opponent actually swapped his hand with certain amount of plagues. Which again is very unintentional, but it is something that deck tracker illegally shows you. And the third thing I've heard about, I haven't really seen it myself, is on iOS, if you have that deck tracker, it is gonna show you when the opponent actually top decks Renifal, which again is unintentional, but it is indeed happening. So these are all a bunch of different things that are giving you extra information which are not really supposed to happen. And you guys saw that the flashing of top deck cards also helps you save tons of time like that, which again I think should not really be happening like that, because god knows you don't get that information from a pen and paper. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video guys, definitely turned out longer than I wanted it to be, but still I hope this helps you set up your deck tracker a lot more optimally. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget you can find me for some Hearthstone coaching. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.